Today what I want to do is show you how you can use Claude.ai to extract NLP keywords from text. And this would be particularly helpful to you if you were writing a blog post from scratch and you wanted to look at your competition and you wanted to find out what key topics and themes and phrases were used throughout your competition's posts. And then you could extract the NLP keywords and use those in your own post to help you possibly outrank your competition. So the way that you would do this is first you've got to find a keyword. Uh, I want to write about electric cars. I'm in incognito mode in Google. And so when you start to see it do an autocomplete for your search, you know that people are searching for this term. What are the pros and cons of electric cars? To extract NLP keywords from your competition, you would want to look at all of these different articles like top pros and cons of electric cars, pros and cons of electric cars, anything that matches the search intent of your long tail keyword. And as you find these various articles, you would copy them and put them in a Google Doc. And here's what I mean. I have this Google Doc, and what I've basically done is I found about seven or eight articles that closely match the search intent for my long tail keyword, what are the pros and cons of owning an electric car. I've copied them. As you can see, I've got 29 pages of text here. And that's what we're going to have Claude extract the NLP keywords from is this text. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got this list of prompts that we're going to run through. Here's the very first prompt. And just so you know, I'm going to have a link in the video description so you can go out to my website and find these prompts and use them yourself. You don't have to try to recreate this on your own. So let's grab that first prompt. It's, I'm writing a blog post, the pros and cons of electric cars based on the following text. Can you list the NLP keywords I should include in my blog post? Include the number of times each NLP keyword should be used. So that's also critical, right? You want to understand not only what key terms and phrases are used in your competition's blog posts, but you want to know how many times they're used. And if you know that frequency of use, then you can make sure that you try to include those phrases and terms in your blog post that you're writing, you know, an equivalent number of times. So we're going to copy that. We'll go to Claude. I did all these prompts with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. That's available on the free plan. Let's do that first prompt. Now, here's the key thing. We have the prompt, but you also have to put in your text because you're asking Claude to evaluate text and pull out NLP keywords. So it has to have that block of text as well. These are all of the blog posts that I copied to extract NLP keywords from. And like I said, it was about seven or eight articles, and it actually is about 29 pages of text. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back over to Claude. I'm just going to do a shift enter. And now I'm going to paste this text in because this is what Claude's going to evaluate. And notice it says it added content, one file. That's 238 lines of the pasted text. So let's run the prompt. All right, here's the completed prompt. If we scroll up, you can see in that pasted text, that's all the articles that match the search intent for my keyword. They're using in their articles electric vehicles 30 to 35 times, battery 15 to 20 times, charging, range, emissions, environmental impact. These are all NLP key phrases and terms that you would want to include within your article that you write. So now that we have these, let's go ahead and write our article. And to do that, we're going to do prompt two. So the next thing we're going to ask it to do is, based on the text, could you suggest a blog outline? Make the headings bold. Do not number the headings. And again, you know, you can tweak these prompts any way that you want to. This is just a nice foundation to get you started. You may play with these and figure out ways to... Um, make changes to them so it writes things differently. You can do whatever you want, but this is what has worked for me. So we're gonna copy that prompt, paste it, and get our outline. And here's the outline that it created. So this is really nice, covers everything here. 
Now we're going to go on to the third prompt. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And it says, using the outline you suggested, can you write a 2,000 to 2,500 word blog post on the topic, what are the pros and cons of owning an electric car? Using the suggested outline and using the NLP keywords with your suggested usage frequency. We'll use subheadings to break up sections with four or more paragraphs. Write in a casual yet informative tone of voice. Write in the third person point of view. Write at an eighth grade level. Let's go back over to Claude. Let's drop it in and see what it comes up with. So here's what it's come up with. It's got this introduction. What are electric cars? It goes through. It's got some subheadings here about fuel savings, lower maintenance costs, tax credit and incentives. So this isn't perfectly formatted. You would bring this into WordPress or I use Ghost, for example. Whatever CMS that you're using to write your blog post, you would go in and you would apply your H1, H2s, H3s. I'm not trying to make it do that here. I personally like to format my article later. I don't need to have Claude do that for me. There are ways to do that. I didn't do it here. You're going to have to also read this through, edit it, fact check it, do all the things that you would do with any AI written piece of content. Now, the one thing I'd like to do is check the word count because I asked it to write between 2,000 and 2,500 words. Claude typically will write 1,500 words on the first go round. Let's go ahead and copy this and drop it into word counter and see what the word count is. Copy that, go to word counter, and again, I don't want to use the FAQ, and I'll show you why in a couple seconds. It wrote 1,663 words. I expected this to happen. I'm going to clear this. Our next prompt is going to be, can you rewrite the blog post and increase the link to at least 2,000 words, but no more than 2,200 words, and make sure and include a conclusion? So it should write longer content with this prompt and rewrite what was originally written, but make it longer and expand it. Not sure why Claude doesn't write 2,000 words right off the bat, but that's the way it works. And so let's run this prompt. So it says the word count is 2,196 words. We'll double check that with word counter. You know, there's a few things I see right off the bat. This conclusion is incredibly long. You'd have to edit this down. You know, you would want to go in again, like I just mentioned, it's AI content. It all needs to be fact checked. And of course, you're going to be adding your own expertise and your own point of view to this article. That's very important, too. So let's just go ahead and copy it. Go to word counter and see if the word count matches up. Claude said it wrote 2,196 words. Word counter is counting 2,414 words, but it is longer. It's more in that two to 2,500 word count that we were looking for, so that's good. Let's go ahead and keep going with these prompts. The next prompt is, how would I add information gain to this blog post so it offers better or more unique content than my competitors? Now what I'm asking Claude to do is, look at that big block of text that I got from all of the different blog post articles that match the search intent for the keyword pros and cons of electric cars. And I want it to examine it and then try and tell me some other information that could be added and make it more unique and make it different from those other articles. Information gain for SEO is just a way of adding either your viewpoint, your expertise, or looking for other information around your keyword that you could add to your blog post to make it better than what your competition has written. Because the key thing is you're always trying to bring value to your readers. If the blog post that you create sounds very much like the top 10 in Google for your keyword, you haven't really brought anything new to the table. This is why I created this prompt about information gain, because I want this article to bring information that the other competitors' articles don't have. I'll copy it, go back over to Claude, drop it in. Let's go ahead and run it. So it's come up with 12 other points that we could add within the article and use that for information gain purposes and use it to make our article just a little bit better than our competitors. One thing that you could do is look at these and then ask Claude to write information about 
each of these different topics and use them as sections in the blog post, I like to do something a little bit different. I just want to make it a little bit easier to incorporate this information and not have to go in and uh, actually make a bunch of adjustments to the post as it's been written now. So let's go to my prompt. The last one is, can you create an FAQ for all of the topics related to information gain? Let's copy this, go back to Claude, start the prompt. So now you've got 15 questions and answers that could be added as an FAQ to the blog post that Claude wrote. What you'd want to do is look at each one of these individually and decide, does it make sense to add to a blog post about pros and cons of electric cars? Maybe not all of these do, but some of these may. And that's why you'd want to go ahead and add those. And now you're adding just some information that's just a little bit different than your competitors. And, you know, you just got a blog post that's a little bit more complete. And this FAQ helps do that. When you go into WordPress or you go into whatever CMS you're using, you would just grab this information and add it to the end of the blog post after the conclusion. The one thing that I want to also check is we did ask it to write at an 8th and ninth grade level. Now, writing about electric cars is somewhat technical. Sometimes Claude will have a difficult time writing to a specific grade level. So I'm just curious to see how close we got. Let's go over to Hemingway and see how we did. Well, this is good. Readability, grade nine. but did write very closely to the grade level that I asked it to write for. I believe I asked in the prompt to write at an eighth and ninth grade level. Let's go ahead and look at my prompt and see if I did that. Yes, I said write at the eighth grade level. So it's coming in at grade nine, which is perfectly fine for readability. And basically, you know, only 38 of 205 sentences are very hard to read. Again, here are all the prompts right here. I'm going to go ahead and add these to my website. You'll see a link in the video description so you can go through and use these yourselves. But this is a good way to extract NLP keywords from a large chunk of text like you see right here. If you do not have an SEO optimization tool, and you're just trying to do things for as cheaply as possible, this is a way to use a free tool like Claude to do that. SEO optimization tools like Neuron Writer and Surfer SEO do this kind of thing for you automatically. This is more manual. It's a more manual process. It is a nice alternative for creating blog posts and optimizing them to try to rank against your content, the top 10 articles that specifically deal with the pros and cons of owning an electric car in this case. And so Claude did a really good job at putting this together. The only thing that I'm going to stress is just remember that the first blog post that it writes will probably be under 2,000 words. Most of the testing that I've done, they've come in at around 1,500 words. And that's why I've got this additional prompt, prompt number four, where I ask it to rewrite the blog post and increase the link to at least 2,000 words. I hope that you find these series of prompts to be useful. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, take care.